Hello everybody, so today we've taken a little drive, we're about 10 minutes from our home and uh, we've come to this place because uh, I want to illustrate something. So inside this driveway or up this driveway lives a really famous artist who believe it or not has been responsible for album covers for Marilyn Manson, Rammstein and of course Scorpions. I'm talking about the wonderful Gottfried Helvine, sorry, and today what we're going to be looking at is the link between visual artists, album covers and rock music. So join us. So hello everybody, welcome to our video. Okay, today we are going to look at the relationship between visual artists and bands uh, in the area of album covers, uh, which is something that's of a lot of interest to me. So I, I've never really discussed this with you Tara, but like when I was a young lad I was exposed to very little art or culture or anything. And to all you out there in television land, I grew up in a very industrial town that had um, absolutely zero culture in it at all, you know. So um, to me, my access to culture was uh, albums. And uh, my kind of approach to visual art was defined by album covers. And, uh, you know, I ended up like some years later working in the arts for 11 years and everything. And uh, I went from these covers and things to going into the Tate Gallery in London and things like this and going from there to all sorts it took me on a journey I don't know I mean uh, what do you feel? Was well I mean it was obviously then from your journey came my journey because you would take me to art galleries and expose me to all this art and obviously I'd be pulling out your albums when I was a kid and going oh wow look at this it's mm. so cool and then that carried on like you know I told you when I went to art college I got up and did a big presentation on Mark Wilkinson's art and, mm, mm, and mm. yeah it's just still with me it's very important to me as well and I feel like it yeah, should yeah. have never stopped. Yeah I suppose like to any of you out there I'm sure there's some of you that were exposed to a lot of art through these albums uh well I was anyway and uh, I know I'm not the only person in that position but uh, I mean to illustrate what we're going to be talking about today, I'm going to kick off by showing one album here, which is Face Dances by The Who. And I can remember when this album came out, uh, it was pretty pretty rough time. Keith Moon had passed away and this was the first album uh, with Kenny Jones on the drums. Uh, I believe uh, Roger Daltrey has said some kind of negative things about Kenny Jones as a drummer, but uh, at the time, I thought he fulfilled the job quite well. Um, uh, Keith Moon actually was used as as, a, as an advertisement to public service ad here on Irish television, where they used to be telling people don't drink and do drugs, and they'd show loads of film of Moon. Like in, well, no, no, not 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 in his drunken state, or but they'd, but they'd show him like playing fabulous drums and everything, and say like he destroyed himself with drinking drugs, but. At the same time, I think they were running the state off the income they were making from alcohol, basically. So, yeah, what were you going to say there? No, it's just the prime example of someone so talented gone too soon. Like, and I mean, he just wasn't, a, he was too much for this world. Mm, mm. He, so he was, like, which yeah. is an awful pity because he was fantastic, but... Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I remember this album came out. I remember staring and looking at it in Woolworth's uh, record bin um, and uh, just being fascinated by it because, to me, I know you like The Who, but to me they were always a terrible, ugly band. <laughs> <laughs> I thought the photographs didn't do many. Look at that one. No, that one's weak. Pete Townsend up here in the car. I don't know if you can see it, but uh, he's, got, he's got a nose like an elephant seal. But... <laughs> But one of the artists on this was William Blake. And I think we can kind of go back and say William Blake was probably not the guy, but he was one of the guys that really set the ball rolling uh, with his cover of uh, Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band, which is a fabulous piece of work. And 
something that fascinates me always to this day. Somebody always brings up some, did you hear of such and such a guy? And I go, no. And they say, oh, well, he was on the cover of uh, Sergeant Pepper's Lovely Arts Club band. So kind of everyone that was anybody is on here, including uh, the chap over there. That uh, He's the guy that uh, Tales from Topographic Oceans was written about. It was his oh, autobiography. Really? So he's on it. Never. So there's all sorts of people on there. So yeah. Fabulous and a great thing like to sit down, you're enjoying the music and you're, you're actually getting lost in the art at the same time, which is uh, what a lot of this stuff did with us. It was something to visually engage with while you were listening to the music and that was the fabulous thing about it. So we're going to go from there into some artists, visual artists that became synonymous with certain bands, you know, yeah. no more so now than the great <laughs> Roger D. Okay, so I mean, we've got to bring Roger in, haven't we? So, close to the edge. Great cover. And of course, like what he said at that time was he wanted to do a logo yeah. for the band, you know? But prior to that, he had done Fragile. Which was my first, yes, album I'd ever been was introduced it? to, um, yeah, when I was younger. Uh, okay. Because I saw it in School of Rock. Oh, right, and I okay. said to you, I was like, Dad, that's one of your albums. And he pulled it out and was like, yeah, here it is. And that was the first piece of Roger Dean artwork I ever saw. Mm. And I feel like it's just ingrained into my brain forever. Now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, again, and again, too, like, you know, it's something that you sit down and you engage with. You're reading the sleeve notes. Uh, somebody said it to me in the comments a while ago. Oh, I'd say you'd be like me. You'd sit down and read all the sleeve notes. And of course, yeah, I did. Yeah, because yeah. it was escapism for me, you know. Um, and then uh, you know, you you you've got like the the spaceship and the planet is okay, and then the planet is falling to bits, and the spaceship is going away. So you've got two different pieces of art, but they're telling the story on that one. Uh, of course, then we have the great. The uh, Great Tales from Topographic Oceans, which I think is one of the best pieces of art that he ever did. Yeah, you know? it's brilliant. Um, fabulous piece. Um, something that anyone would be proud to have up on the wall. One of these wraparound pieces of art, which is just amazing. Yeah, yeah. My personal favourite is Drama. I absolutely love this album cover. Um, it was the kind of era of, yes, I was actually into them and this came out. Yeah. So it was kind of, uh, it was part of the experience, you know, it was, ah, you know, yes, I have an album out, and it was, uh, it was this, and, you know, everything about it screams, we are, yes, we have made this album in the classic way that yes makes an album, and, uh, yeah, yeah, it's, uh, it's an absolutely fantastic cover, uh, we actually have a rug in the room here, which is the cover <laughs> of that, which Tara got me for Christmas, she's a great daughter. Absolutely great. And of course your favourite there, Tara. Yes, I love <laughs> Relayer. Uh, the art of it, I feel like it fits so well with the album because you can imagine Alan White's drum sound echoing through this big ice oh, wow. chamber. Oh, yeah. It just it kind of really drove my imagination wild, mm. especially when I heard the music going with it. Mm. And I just, I think it's fantastic the way he could take all the colour out and everything. And just have such a muted palette, but still such a huge impact with the visuals of it. Oh my God, he's just a genius, that man. Mm, An mm. absolute genius, I love it. Yeah, I, I just think it's a bit washed out with the colours. That's the only thing that does it for me, but I still love that album cover, yeah. But of course, we know that he went way beyond just working with Yes. So <laughs> we've got Octopus by Gentle Joint, which I think is one of his finest works of art. Fantastic. Yeah. It's, uh, obviously watercolour and it's just oh, it's just amazing I, I think it really captures them. I believe they changed the cover for the American release of this mm. and took it off it which I don't know what lunatic in the uh, in the record company came up with that idea but uh, not very clever not a good idea no not very good so uh, yeah one of his his <laughs> earliest work was uh, with Ozabisi I love that one if I'm pronouncing that wrong please forgive me why yeah yeah the album, I love this album, I think it's fabulous. Um, came across these when I was a young lad, like, you know, we used to have MTUSA on the Sunday on the television, and when they stopped it, they didn't know what to put on, so they put on the best of the beat club from uh, Germany, 
from like uh, the late 60s, early 70s. And I'll tell you, that was some introduction to fabulous music. Mm. And one of the bands I saw in it was Azabisa and I just couldn't get over them. Um, years later, like I've picked up like an odd album of theirs in places and uh, they've all been fantastic. And, um, you know, it's kind of Afrobeat. If you like Santana, great band to get into. You know, it's that kind of driving beat as well. And of course, one of your favourites there, Tara. Mm, I know, I've said it a billion times on the channel, but The Magician's Birthday cover is absolutely brilliant. He just, he captured it so well. You know, there's the, there's the wizard, there's the magician battling him. Oh my God, like it's just unreal. And the colours of it are so striking and I would absolutely love that as a big wall piece. That's a fantastic one, yeah. Uh, but prior to that, of course, you had Demons and Wizards, like, yeah, which, was which is probably brilliant the most successful as well. Goal. And, uh, yeah, I mean, you can see within all the kind of, uh, you know, even on the inside, we've got this kind of creature coming out of the smoke here, you know, like the demon, etc. Um, fabulous cover, and the, the butterfly wings on the uh, on the wizard here. Uh, and, uh, you know, I... I didn't kind of think they were butterfly wings, then I did. And now lately I'm kind of thinking, no, they're not butterfly wings, they're Roger Dean's version of butterfly wings, you know. Mm. So, uh, absolutely, like, amazing cover as well, yeah. yeah. So that's fabulous. So where did all this synonymous with the band thing come from? They came from the Moody Blues, of course. Yeah, one, uh, What didn't, you could say, by this point. Oh. Yeah. So we had Philip Travers, who did... Uh, uh, who did their covers? I think this is mind blowing. It is, yeah. you know. And I was reading about how he came up with this cover. He said he couldn't come up with anything. And then he was sitting in the studio and they were playing, and he was in the control room and he could look in at him. And he said all of a sudden this picture started to go up on the glass between him and the band. I'd say I'd say there could have been some substances take, <laughs> and it was supposed to be like the music going up to heaven and things like that. <laughs> Uh, they wanted something apparently that, that uh, showed meditation. Yeah. And uh, he said as he didn't meditate, he couldn't think of anything. But this is absolutely mind blowing. I believe, uh, what is it, um, On the Threshold of a Dream was the first wrap round cover ever done that you could open out and a piece of art went out across the two of them. So we have Mr. Travers to thank for that. And uh, speaking of wrap round, what about wrap up? And uh, his, uh, his amazing cover of A Question of Balance, uh, which is absolutely some piece of art. I absolutely adore it. But he's, uh, he was synonymous with the band during their core era. He did six covers for them, one after the other. Uh, each one of them is an amazing work of art. Something that you can sit down and look at and appreciate as you go through mm. the albums. You know, so fantastic. So another person then that's synonymous with the band is the great, uh, the one and only Mr. Neon Park. <laughs> Why well, isn't every time I hold up one of, the, one of his covers, I just can't stop laughing. It's just crazy and it was just so unique to come out with something like that. I just, I think he was in a world of his own. Unfortunately, I haven't got the gatefold version of this, so I wish I had because you've got the snail looking up at the cake with legs on it <laughs> kicking off the red shoes and the swing uh, so yeah so that's the same I love shoes. I think he's so free uh, he's, he's fantastic and he's absolutely amazing you know uh, feet don't fail me now where we've got George Washington and Marilyn Monroe in the car going, going up along the side of the hill it's so vivid the colour yeah um, it's there's a kind of 1950s throwback almost to uh, some of this stuff and the way that he does it, there's a kind of feel towards advertising. Mm. There's all sorts of things in it. Uh, absolutely amazing. Of course, the man was responsible for Weasel's Rip My Flesh by Zappa as well, which uh, is another iconic album cover. Uh, this one then, absolutely amazing. So we've got Hollywood there as a big blancmange or uh, jelly or whatever we whip on the top. <laughs> And we've got some sort of rabbit thing here. I <laughs> with, love it. I just, with, I love it. With, with antlers. <laughs> who, who would think of that? Like, 
Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. Oh, it's, it's absolutely amazing. You know, the I love his covers. They're just so bizarre that they just bring me off somewhere, somewhere else. Okay, so uh, do you want to take us on a thing? I mean, Tara said earlier on that she did a bit on Mark Wilkinson's cover. So do you want to do a bit on Wilkinson then? And I'll oh, I'll settle into the background. Uh, Grand. Well, I'll I leave mean, you in our capable hands. You're welcome to <laughs> cut in. Uh, when I was in art college, it was all very mainstream. And we were given this assignment to do a presentation about an artist. Everyone kind of chose like fashion designers and you know, like Leonardo da Vinci and everything. And I was thinking, God, I'd love to do something different. And at the time I was 19 and I was so into Marillion, Fischiera. And I thought, what if I came out and did a presentation on the four albums and the covers that Mark Wilkinson did on them. So I put together a big PowerPoint presentation and I had all the cover. Now it's a pity I didn't have the actual albums on me to pass around to everyone because I'd say they would love that. But I started off with script for a jester's tear and I told the story of the jester and this man. He's living in misery. He's just lost the love of his life. Uh, I pointed out the records on the floor, saucer full of secrets. No one knew what I was talking about. <laughs> yeah, so that went down well. With you know, of... I mean, like, but there was one guy there and he was a bit older than everyone else. He was in his 30s and he was like completely just staring at me like his mind was blown, which is what I wanted. And I would love for more people to discover this stuff. So I was telling the story across the albums and uh, I played a little bit of Kaylee for them and they all went, oh yeah, I've heard that before. So like, yeah, that's them, that's them. So I went into Fugazi and showed how his life, it's just falling apart even more as he spirals into alcoholism and uh, he gets uh, screwed over by a girl that they call the She Chameleon which is absolutely fantastic. Uh, I just, uh, this is another one I want to hang on my wall as well. I've been trying to get someone to print it off for me. Are you sure? I think ah. it is a masterpiece. It's Watching a great his, 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 his costume being stripped away from him and, and the colour even coming out of his arm as he's he's spilling the drink on the floor is just incredible. Oh, yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. I didn't notice that, yeah. Yeah, it's it's yeah. just... Uh, well, and you got more albums on the floor, including The Wall. Yeah. But uh, Fish has said that um, uh, Script for a Jester Tea was bedsick thoughts. Mm. Um, Fugazi was kind of a partner of thoughts. Mm. And you can see he's in a kind of grotty bedsit on Script for a Jester Tea. He's in a kind of apartment on Fugazi and then he said uh, misplaced childhood was home thoughts mm -hmm. so uh, yeah where he's he's kind of talking about uh, his own childhood mm. in this which was the concept behind it mm. um, I think he executed it a little bit mm, through the music but uh, that's just my opinion but the artwork again is just fantastic you've got this little boy and you know, he's singing about uh, white boys born with hearts of Lothian and you've got the jester running out the window here and oh my god. And then you end on clutching with straws where you can see nearly all the colour is gone out of him. Everyone else in the bar, like their lives have just fallen apart as well and that, that's where they exist now. It's just on a bar stool. And you can see he's tucked away the jester costume into his pocket because it's all over now. And this is his life. Mm. And I think it's... it's and you have the people most... there to some of his, uh, his uh, influence. Uh, you've got Jack Kerouac there, haven't you? Yeah. I... And that, isn't that... Uh, that's Dylan Thomas there as well. So that's Jack Kerouac, that's Dylan Thomas. Sorry. I, I tried to say point. that to them as well in the class, but yeah. sure, they hadn't a clue. And on the back, you've got, like got John Lennon. John Lennon and that's yeah. Ernest Hemingway, I think, and yeah. that's James Dean uh, at the pool table. So yeah. yeah, yeah, on the back there. So yeah, fantastic. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, uh, there we have like a real collaboration between the artist and the group, where, mm. where they're all trying to like give a message across, which is fantastic. Yeah. So uh, we move on then to. Uh, the uh, the
the man who was the uh, the artist or the, the I suppose company artist you could say for um, Charisma Records at one time, which is Paul Whitehead. Um, so he starts with uh, Trespass with Genesis, so like very synonymous with this era of Genesis. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so the whole idea was to have like a kind of storybook picture on the front of it because the music is like kind of storybooks and, and when they heard it they said uh, it's not you know when they saw the painting they said it's a bit kind of bland it doesn't really kind of have any danger so apparently Whitehead stuck this dagger in it and tore his own canvas and um, photographed it and that's what they went with on the cover which is absolutely amazing really? because that act is also art you yeah. know so the whole lot of it there here would you put the stuff down to your side of the night uh, yeah, we moved on to Nursery Crime then, which is an amazing cover again, which was apparently based on the lawn at Peter Gabriel's house in Surrey. Fancy boy. Fancy boy. Fancy, fancy boy. boy. And apparently when he painted it, he left it out in the, in the air to dry and there's kind of flies stuck to it and it's cracking and all sorts <laughs> of things. So again, we have kind of the painting itself and then we have reality added to it as well. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then one that has no kind of uh, extraneous bits, which is the Foxtrot cover, which is an amazing cover. Because I think like this one, he's really getting to a point here where he's relating to the work within mm. the actual album itself. So yeah, wonderful the piece of work. Six saintly shrouded men and yes, everything yeah, like that. Yeah, it's yeah, just exactly. oh, unreal. Yeah, fantastic. But he didn't just end there because uh, he worked then with uh, Van der Graaff Generator, who were also on it with the great Pawn Hearts cover. So I think Peter Hamill said something to him about whether you're a king or a pauper were all pawns. Mm -hmm. So his idea was to have like all these different characters on a curtain above the earth like that would be opened and closed and you know, so whatever you are you're just uh, And there were people that were held in high regard in real life. And we can see, like, you know, there's a, they're all kind of royalty and everything. Yeah, yeah, there's we can see, like, there's a king the here, like, he looks like King uh, King George or whatever. Um, um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, just to show, it doesn't matter yeah, what astronauts, you did. Astronauts, all sorts on of Earth, or just yeah, the cricket players, so sports people, religious people. So, yeah, so it doesn't matter, we're all just pawns, according to and then an interesting one that he did, which is Illusions by Renaissance, which was like the second album they recorded, but didn't come out until 1977, I think, because of what was going on with the band. But we've got like the child on the path on the front of us. Uh, and then we go to the old sage on the back. Mm. And then when we open up the middle, it, uh, it, it, it you've got one big piece, which Hello. probably could have been on the Brilliant. outside. So we've got the sage coming down from the moon and death is here playing the violin beside him. Uh, amazing. Uh, it's great. I, that's one now I'd like on my wall. <laughs> it, it could remind me of my own mortality. Won't be long now. Won't be long now. You'll be ringing the undertaker. <laughs> getting me removed. You know? So uh, a few kind of uh, call outs then to a few things, you know. Because I, you know, I realised this video is kind of going on and on and on, like you know. And to be honest with you, we could have gone on further and further. You know, we were saying, oh, we put our favourite albums in there, and then each of the covers like are based on different things. And you go, well, why do I like this cover? And mm. it could be there's things that have lovely die cut features in them. There's things that are textured covers. There's bits that are wonderful art. So we said, you know, what we'll do. We'll just have a look at kind of visual artists and painters who were kind of uh, involved with bands and album covers. But we've got the great Helmut Vinsky with uh, with Nectar, who did a couple of fantastic covers for them there. Uh, of course, a British band, but uh, were very popular in Germany and actually moved over there and based themselves out of there. These are fantastic covers. So we got that one, Tab in the Ocean, and then we've got Remember the Future. Brilliant. Which is just mind blowing. I mean, this guy uh, was an incredible artist, and these are some of the nicest covers I've ever seen. Absolutely, album, yeah. you know, fantastic. Uh, so then we go on. We've got the great. Uh, let's see, what's his name? Patrick Woodruff, 
uh, and uh, we've got one of Greenslade's albums here. Roger Dean did one of these as well, didn't he? For he Greenslade. did Bedside Manners or extra. Yeah, yeah. So when he wasn't available, then they got Patrick Woodruff to come in and fill in for him. Woodruff was a um, an illustrator for books, I believe, and uh, he did an absolutely brilliant job. But that's really kind of creepy and everything. And yeah, wraps around. I think they kind of ruined it by putting the lads' heads. <laughs> On the back yeah, they're lovely, leave them alone. <laughs> yeah, but they could have put that on the, on the inner sleeve or something. Don't destroy the artwork, don't destroy the artwork. And then uh, he also worked with Palace on uh, on this wonderful what album, album. Like, you know. Hmm? What an album. It's, well, I don't know. How well, uh, the record company intervened and ruined it. Yeah, well, you know, I don't know. Uh, the Sentinel. I remember I went out and bought this. There was a lot of hype about this there at the time, you know. Mm. Uh, EMI actually reformed the Harvest label, which was the progressive label, in order to put this album out on. You got Eddie offered in to produce it and everything. And uh, they were just, you know, I, I think they had one huge piece of music that would have been the whole album. And they were told, like, oh, no, you can't do that. And it was all cut to pieces. But uh, yeah, fabulous album. I remember when it came out and I was kind of, oh yeah, I really like this. Uh, you know, so it was around the time of Marillion and that sort of thing. You couldn't buy IQ albums here for some reason or another. Whoever their distributors were, they didn't send them to Ireland. But I was able to get this and I got this in and I had a free poster of the cover with it, which was fantastic. Mm. And uh, I had it up in the wall and my mother decided she was going to change the wallpaper one day when I was in school. <laughs> I came back and everything was, everything was torn off the wall. See, I'm terrible upset. Everything was torn off the wall, including the poster. The poster was in shreds, like thrown in a bag with old bits of wallpaper. But uh, oh, it was beautiful. It was lovely. But I mean, what was I doing, sticking it to the wall? Why didn't I just leave it in the album? Because you, know? you were a young fella. Yeah, it's the kind of thing you did then when you were young. Yeah. And then of course we'd Mr. Godber with the uh, with the great uh, King Crimson album cover. You know, Barry Godber. Uh, unfortunately, died very young, heart attack at 24. You know, so what else might have been with this guy? Apparently, he did this in a shaving mirror as a self portrait. <laughs> God to help him, huh? <laughs> but uh, the band were apparently recording Skitside Man in the studio, and he came in and just laid out this. And when they came in from the studio and looked at us in the control room, it was exactly what they were playing, you know. So, yeah, fabulous album cover. I love it to bits, but we've all seen it a million times at this stage. And, uh, big shout out to Wayne Coyne and the Flaming Lips, you know. So, uh, he tends to do a lot of his own cover art. Uh, this one of them, Yoshimi Battles the Pink Robots. I remember when this album came out, I was quite impressed by this album. This, to me, was the kind of first leanings back towards a kind of a look at progressive music mm. you know uh, when this came out I remember listening to it and going they're analog synthesizers mm -hmm. things like that you know so everything had much more uh, how can I put it uh, much more character to it and everything on the record uh, it's also one I bought on CD and then I saw this going on vinyl and I thought oh Jesus you know because I bought a lot of a few things in CD and then I bought them on vinyl and they just sounded kind of on the vinyl. But I bought this on vinyl and it sounds brilliant on it. It yeah. sounds fantastic. Great album. Yeah, Flaming Lips, uh, Yoshimi Battles, the Pink Robots. So uh, another great one then we've got Mally Clarvine who did the uh, did the cover to uh, Bitches Brew by Miles Davis. That's one of the most incredible pieces of art I've ever seen in it, my life. It is absolutely amazing look at the contrast like between dark and light on this thing uh it's not to show difference it's to show commonality what makes us one and drives us together far exceeds what drives us apart okay and this album shows humanity linked together and linked with nature yeah and that was the idea that he was trying to get across he obsessively listened to the music on the album prior to coming out with this and it is oh. absolutely amazing and of course Abraxas by uh, Santana references this image over here as well. Absolutely fantastic cover. Love it. Love it. Yeah, I had to put that one in. <laughs> of course it is. Okay, okay. And then we've got one that uh, from a guy who uh, 
actually put his name on the front of it. Uh, covering this. David Mackin. David Mackin, who did the cover for Frank Zappa's Overnight Sensation. Which is brilliant. I love the way the electric arm is coming into the thing to get a cigarette out of the picture, <laughs> like in the, in the back. It's an amazing cover. You could just sit here for days and days looking at all the all the detail on it. Yeah. And of course, the same guy did Left Overture for Kansas. Mm -hmm. So, ma massive, massive uh, piece. Wonderful, wonderful album cover. I love that. The more that I can look at in these things, the better I like it. <laughs> okay, okay. And then, uh, one that I basically want to shout out, which is John Holmes, uh, for his, uh, his cover of Celebration by... Uh, Spooky too. Ceremony. ceremony, sorry. I keep saying that. This is the second time I've actually said that. Doesn't look like much of a celebration no, to me. No, no. <laughs> ceremony by Pierre Henri and Spooky Tooth, uh, which was the album that kind of destroyed Spooky Tooth because they went down this kind of alleyway with it. But uh, it's it's like a kind of a mass from start to finish. We can see somebody is crucifying someone with a nail through their head, but they're actually driving it through their own hand at the same time. Mm -hmm because what hurts others, hurts ourselves mm -hmm. as well. And that's the idea he was trying to get across. Uh, this guy is a young guy, he worked in the meat yards in uh, Smithfield in London to keep his family uh, going. And you can kind of see the way the bodies are presented as meat on this thing. I think it's an amazing cover and an amazing piece of art myself. And it's one that I just find fascinating for the cover uh, in anything else. I, I think, do you know what, I mean, we have a few more to go, but I think we'll end there, we're, we're after, I can see by the thing, we're after hitting half an hour on this video. <laughs> so listen, uh, hope you enjoyed them, uh, put anything that you have, like, in mind in the comments, we'd love to hear, like, uh, what art and uh, covers that you have to go together, but remember, in this one, we're only talking about painters and visual artists, rather than people that would uh, would do other things and, and bits we and pieces. purposely avoided hypnosis as well oh yeah we did we know hypnosis because of the uh, we did the hypnosis video and uh, we found a lot of people didn't like hypnosis so uh, so we said we do one without hypnosis and uh, this is just completely like artists so you have to kind of like their art to do this thing but yeah it'd be great to hear from you so with uh, a few other ones and we might do a few more of these videos maybe looking at things like mm. die cut album covers textured album covers and different things like that sorry i'm terrible indigestion today <laughs> must be the excitement to do in the video but uh but yeah so if uh if you want please leave something in the comments um subscribe if you're not because it all helps uh like the video share the video and we'll see you on the next one pretty soon Bye. Bye.